Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it's wonderful to be here with you. And it's even more wonderful that I am here with the Minister of Communication and Information Technology. And we have lots to talk about. We're going to talk about the convolution of digital economy and space economy. Now, if that confuses a few of you, then I'm in good company because when you think of it, I wasn't real sure where we were going to go with this. But it is a topic I think that people are very, very excited about. But not a whole lot of people know much about it. So bring us, just give us a sort of a feel, what exactly is the convergence of space and digital economy and where's the potential? Well, Ethna, first of all, thank you for that lovely introduction. And it's an absolute pleasure to take this opportunity to commend the PIF team for doing a fantastic job four years in a row with the fifth year anniversary. So can we give them a big round of applause? <laughs> amazing job, amazing job. Now let me talk to you about the convergence between digital and space. And I'll share with you the story. The first time I got the call from His Royal Highness on space, he called me up and he summoned me to his office. And he said to me, how long has the internet been around? And I said, sir, it has been around for 50 years. He said to me, look at space, it's going to change humanity the same way the internet economy has done. And if you look at the history, it's actually a great predictor of the future. Because actually, the digital economy started in space. And I'll share with you a few examples. So one of the first early missions was about putting a man on the moon. And one of the biggest challenges at that time, that the size of the computer was literally half of the stage. So they had to miniaturize it. And that pushed them to move from a tube architecture to a transistor. Secondly, when they launched these satellites, they had to you know, stay in orbit. Because of the orbital mechanics, you need to give them a little bit of a thrust. And that evolved solar panels to give them energy. And that ignited for us the renewable energy. And also to give astronauts oxygen to be able to breathe in space, it was the electrolysis process that split H2O into oxygen to give them breathe. And today we inverse this process to create green hydrogen. So this convolution, Etna, is going to be the next big thing in the next 50 years. And it's going to be the only way we could tackle things like the digital divide of how we can empower people, safeguard the planet, and shape new frontiers. I mean, it's fascinating, and all of that, you know, it's just stuff we now take for granted. But we also take for granted, you know, I mean, that we're digitally connected. And we expect that to happen, and we probably don't think enough about it, really. But talk to me about how space is going to actually improve people's lives. And really, yes, here in the kingdom, but around the world. I mean, Etna, we've heard it this morning that during COVID, digitalization was the largest social equalizer and economic multiplier. But the biggest challenge, it has exacerbated the digital poverty. Half of the world is not connected today. We had more than half a billion students could not continue their education because of lack of connectivity. Two billion people could not access basic healthcare because of lack of telemedicine. And even in so-called advanced economies, 100 million workers could not continue their work. This is absolutely not acceptable. And this is why, with the convergence of the space economy and the digital economy, we could deploy today low Earth orbiting satellites to bridge this gap. This, and this is indeed what we plan to do with our global innovators and investors. And again, I suppose we just, you know, because everybody in our sphere, I suppose, was connected and most of the people that we know, you know, we were connected with. But again, there is there's a whole other world out there that's just, it's, it's, it's not, and we're, they're not as lucky. So, Indeed. I mean, I take that point. But what is the kingdom doing, I think, now to really develop the wider space economy? Because there's a lot of potential there. We're doing a lot of amazing things. I mean, we made a commitment during the G20 president, presidency during 2020 that we're going to realize the opportunities of the 21st century by, again, empowering people, safeguarding the planet, and shaping new frontiers. And we started the year with a large announcement by His Royal Highness announcing the line, which is the next urban model to make sure that we build cities around nature and in harmony with nature. Because we just finished the Saudi Green Initiative and Middle East Green Initiative, which was a huge success. But the number one asset class today that is responsible for greenhouse emissions, 30% of them globally, is actually real estate. And this is what the line is able to do so. So we are safeguarding the planet and to make sure that we empower people 
Today we're working with global innovators in how we can close down the digital divide and solve for very particular issues that are impacting our region. So, for example, desertification. We were able to leverage satellite imagery with artificial intelligence to, to be able to stop random farming. Not only we cut down emissions, but we were able to conserve water because that random farming was actually wasting three years worth of water where we cut it by one third. So I guess the efficiency that comes on this is incredible. Indeed. But talk to me about, I mean, there's some great projects it sounds like going on. Where is this in terms of you know, investors? Where's the opportunities? So if you look at the uh, space economy today, it's the next trillion dollar opportunity. And predominantly what we have seen is that 60 to 70% of the opportunities in the downstream. In other words, everything that we do on the ground. And this is the intersection and the convolution with the digital economy, how we can get the data scientists and the engineers to work hand in hand to make sure that we reap the fruits of that data. Also, secondly, what we have been observing is that in the past two years, Etna, we have seen more funding into space than in the past 50 years. So definitely the window is opening up, and this is the right opportunity to engage with the best thinkers and doers in this space. And it is, you're so right. There seemed to have been a lull, I think, for a few years, and suddenly it's kind of the, the race to space is back and it's top priority and everybody's talking about it. And again, all of the other businesses that come from it. Now, I mean, you spent most of your career, your early career in the private sector. You know what it's like in terms of investment, in terms of what you need, who you need to work with. And again, you look at what's going to be happening here. You know, you need a transparent, legal system, you need good regulation. There's a whole lot you need as a private investor to make sure that you're here and you're putting your money in the right business and making sure that there are returns for it, really. So you're wearing a new hat now, but you know the pain or the challenge and the excitement of being on the private side as well. Atna, this is my third physical FII, and I remember succinctly when I was sitting on the other side, hearing what the investors are looking for. They're looking for clarity, for consistency and commitment. And I remember exactly when we made a commitment to them that we're gonna revamp the digital foundation and we jumped from being 105 to number five globally, powered by investment and partnership with the private sector. And then in the second FII, we said to them, we're gonna move from the foundation to the platform economy, and then we landed major deals with Google and Alibaba north of $1.5 billion. And today, with sponsorship of His Royal Highness, we're announcing the next big thing in the space and digital economy. This is an opportunity for us to walk the talk when it comes to closing down the digital divide. The, His Royal Highness made this commitment in 2020. And in January, we launched the line, and by the end of this year, we're announcing today one of the largest joint ventures between Neom and OneWeb. And this joint venture is gonna release one of the largest low Earth orbiting constellations to close down the digital divide in Middle East and Africa so no child is left behind Etna. So we make sure that we empower people with education because that's the passport into a better life. And last but not least, giving people and merchants access to opportunities with remote working and access to trade. Wow, well, this is, I mean, this is an incredible, and isn't it, this is just great. Um, and I mean, this is, this, is, this is big time. But give us a feel, I suppose, you, I mean, you touched on it there. What is this gonna look like, and what really is, you know, give us a feel for if I'm sitting here going, this is great to hear this, but now, what's my next step? What, what do I need to do here? This, uh, these are opportunities that demonstrate we're here to walk the talk and to engage with you. So whether we're talking on the foundational level, we're currently the 13th largest backbone of the digital economy, supercharged to becoming one of the top five global opportunities. And if we look at the ICT market, that's a $40 billion market, definitely doubling by the next 10 years, and that's an opportunity to engage. To maximize the benefit of this foundation and this inertia, we need to move into the innovation economy and the space economy. And then when innovation, we heard of this earlier this week, we're doubling down on renewables and green hydrogen, and those are big opportunities. We've invested in green hydrogen more than $5 billion in partnership with AquaPower and Air Products. And today, we're here to engage with you about space. Space is the next big thing, and the announcement that we're making today is only the tip of the iceberg, because I expect when we sit down with the innovators and the investors, the sky will be the limit. 
Now, I mean, this, your, your job is going to probably get, just get busier, and uh, I'm sure you're up to the challenge on that. But when you look at what's happening here in the kingdom at the moment, I mean, we heard the net zero targets, you know, for 2060. You know, you have this big space program. There's so much going on here. I mean, it's, it's like everybody's on that big highway, and it is only going in one direction. There are no U-turns. I mean, how exciting is it, and how important is this for the kingdom, I think, to really become such, I mean, as you are, a global player, but really shine on the global stage in terms of all that is going on. Etna, we just touched on the convolution of the digital and the space economy. Within the digital economy, there will be disruptors and those that will be disrupted. And definitely, we're living in a time where you either disrupt or be disrupted. And when it comes to the space economy, there are the challengers and those that will be challenged, and the kingdom indeed intends to be the challenger and the disruptor. Well, it's, it's an exciting position to be in, I'm sure, work-wise for you. Um, it's just, uh, it's, 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 it's very interesting as well, because it's not just, you know, it's, it's your sector and then every other sector underneath that. It's health, it's energy, it's, you know. It's only gonna get more excited from this standpoint. It really, really is. Um, we have a few minutes left, and I mean, I look at, you know, just what you've announced here. And as I said, you know, we have many investors here, and we will have many more that will be coming here. So they're probably rearranging their portfolio as we speak. Um, what do they need to know in terms of, you know, how to get involved here? And what are the advantages? You know, give me a feeler for if I'm an outside investor coming into Saudi Arabia, and now I have this great opportunity in this sector. What should I be looking at and what, what are you going to do for me as an investor? Investors, they look where the money is and definitely this is the largest market by mile when it comes to the MENA region. And when you look at the space sector, definitely the defense spending being one of the top five defense spenders globally is, is going to supercharge us to become a superpower in that space. So becoming a super house when it comes to investment, that is the place to be. Secondly, when it comes to talent, we have the highest concentration of programmers, innovators, and STEM graduates. And I have to share with you that when it comes to women participation in ICT, we are so proud of our young ladies of doing a fantastic job in growing our GDP. And as a result of that, we've seen women participation grow in the past five years from 7% to 25%, surpassing both the EU average and the G20 average. I was going to ask you about the talent. You know, there's so much happening. Do you have enough talent? And how are you working in terms, you know, of working with the universities and working with industry and working with, you know, key professionals out there to make sure that this talent is, is nurtured and is, is almost like job ready because there's going to be a lot of new jobs that are out there as well. Absolutely. It's one of the highest growing opportunity for us when it comes to talent capacity building. When I took over Aetna with the support of His Royal Highness, we were at 250,000 workers, and today we're surpassing the 350 mark, which is an opportunity for us to show how much growth and momentum is happening. And what is pleasant about it is that we're doubling down both on youth and women, surpassing both the EU and the G G20 average. And if you look at the data in terms of VC and entrepreneurship, it has tripled in the past three years to an extent what we have seen in the first nine months of 2021 is actually equivalent to what we have seen in 2020 and 2019 combined. This is level of momentum and passion and energy that is relentless and you won't find it anywhere else in the region. I think the speed of development and the speed of advancement and everything that's going on here is very exciting. But as you said, you know, there will be the disruptors and there will be the disrupted. When you look around industry and you look, uh, there's probably a few that need a little bit of encouragement here. What do you say to those industries that possibly, you know, have not, you know, moved on to, I, I can't imagine there's too many, but in terms of those who probably have not fully embraced the new digital future? Let me spin it positively, if you allow me. I had the great opportunity of meeting a lot of brick and mortar traders today that converted their business with, to e-commerce, for example. And that was the biggest blessing in disguise for them, where they have scattered, rocketed in terms of business. We had Jarir today, they do a billion dollars north of uh, e-commerce business, and it has been flourishing to them. FinTech has been huge, one of the highest growth opportunities for the region. The Kingdom is one of the top 10 growing opportunities. And when you look at digital content and creative content, oh boy, the, the nation is hungry for it. And the moment you bring the creatives with the engineers together, magic happens. 
It is. I've always said it's kind of the tech and the talent. You put uh, the two together. Indeed. Super. We have to leave it there. Um, Your Excellency Abdullah Al Swaha. Great that he's been here to join us. Thank you. And again, um, I think our. Uh, you're, we're in safe hands with you. And well done on your great announcement. It's Thank fabulous. you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much for being with us.